what's up guys welcome back to the beanie shack and today's video we're just going to talk about and recap a little bit of e3 uh i don't know we're going to talk about some of the biggest games that they probably released and pretty much what they didn't talk about and how i feel personally that e3 this year was a bit lackluster to say the least and i i mean it, Hear me out. It's no secret that most of the biggest developers that we had to look from or that we were expecting to hear from, you know, showed up with, uh, I don't know, Halo Infinite, Guardians of the Galaxy, uh, Breath of the Wild 2, with uh, the, the link to the Legends of Zelda, Breath of the Wild 2, that one right there, the Kazuya and super smash bros you know stuff like that but i i just feel like this year's e3 was could have been a bit more i don't know revealing now granted we did get some good gameplay like pretty much some raw gameplay early alpha gameplay from a few games like Halo Infinite and Battlefield and whatnot, but there was still left to be desired from a few developers, namely Take Two Interactive. I feel that their little segment could have been held off. I feel that they took the time to basically, uh, I don't know, uh, reinforce the fact that we had a Gay Pride Month or we have a Gay Pride Month or something like that, and you know the equality and all that stuff man i just felt like that that could have been held that could have been done somewhere else you know what i'm saying that could have been done on a personal stream uh for people who were actually in, interested and wanted to see that for me this is e3 i'm come, i come for gameplay i come for reveals you know what i'm saying and i want to be hyped along the way i feel like take two took a bit too much time to talk about nothing that involved gaming only things that involved the mechanics and gears in game and that just goes to, that means just the people involved in the whole situation you know what i mean so yeah i feel like that was a big letdown you know i feel like uh you know bandai namco was a bit uh, a bit of a letdown as well you know what i'm saying just a bunch of a bunch of games that don't pertain to me and that's the did keep in mind this is my opinion this is how i feel about e3 like i say i don't do a lot of you know cartoony games and stuff like that a lot of games is turn-based or you know I, I don't i don't partake anything that i don't know anything about and i i don't feel that any of the games that bandai and namco would be pre presented at e3 would be any of the games that i would have gone after not to say that anybody else wouldn't be a fan of that some people i know a lot of people who love those anime style games and they just sit there and play those games and to each his own but i feel like the bandai namco part of things were was a bit lackluster as well you know what i mean and uh yeah, we had a few, even if we had even a few big, big name games, or you could call them big name games, such as Crystal Dynamics, Marvel's Avengers dropping a, a trailer that they could have dropped long, long, to a long time ago. You know what I'm saying? And let us know what's going on. It could have been a whole lot better with, with what they had to present. Like we could have got more. Instead, that wasn't the case. Now, People are gonna say something about when I, people who watch this video and they hear me talk about Avengers, they're gonna be like, "Oh, you just rough on the company." You damn right, I'm rough on the company. As a matter of fact, I'm trying. I'm being rough on all these game developers because of the simple fact of they don't seem to understand that time is money, and in a world that the world that we live in today, post pandemic, with everything that's going on, not many jobs going on. We talking about. You know, people still looking, people are still trying to figure out where they're going to move. What's the next, you know, chapter of their lives, given everything that's going on. For those who sit back and are trying to make a career out of gaming, whether it be streaming, YouTubing or any kind of thing, this makes it all the more difficult, guys. You have to understand 
if you're not going to put the passion and the quality into your games and, and if you're going to and ready to present and tell us hey this is what's going on this is where we're at or if all you have is trailers like this one in the back for contraband i was interested in this game but all i can see is this you know what i'm saying that's not enough you guys cannot come to a, a stage like this with trailers and, and little to no gameplay to back up what you have going on. This, in my opinion, is is a bad sign. And it's a bad sign because of the, the way that we've been, the hand that we've been dealt with gaming over the last couple of years. Games releasing broken. Games releasing, uh, uh, you know, incomplete. Games chock full of DLC when it shouldn't. Games highlighting uh, uh, new features that aren't new features. Features that have been in the game for years that you bring back and tell us that they knew. You know, do I need to say anything about Madden, 2K, and all that? Uh, any other sports game that has no competition that gets complacent and they continue that they refuse to update their game? This is a big reason why Take Two Interactive. Well, uh, was a bit was lackluster. They had nothing to say about anything that any of their fans were looking forward to. No news on 2K. No news on GTA. Nothing. They had nothing to offer. And in my opinion, they by far were the worst part of the whole E3 thing. Now, yeah, we got plenty of gameplay from plenty of big name studios like Battlefield and Halo and all that, like I said earlier. But that don't that's not enough that's not enough for me yeah i like the way it looks and all that stuff and y'all look good playing on a landline y'all look good playing in the office with each other but when it's time to put up or shut up and y'all release these event uh these games out into the uh a world hooked up through servers and stuff that 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 require a certain ping or whatever you want to call it however you plan on doing it however you want to release it you can't just drop it out there like you've been sitting there like you playing it on a land server on a landline you know what i'm saying you can't uh, with halo infinite y'all on y'all probably y'all are really really breaking the mold with this game being that there will be a there's supposedly a campaign involved and there's going to be multiplayer and it's going to be free on games pass and all that like there really isn't much room for a mistake to uh, in gameplay you know what i'm saying now yeah granted halo looks like halo to me you know what i'm saying it looks like it hadn't changed from to uh from what it used to be and it still looks fun and i could say the same thing about the battlefield the battlefield looks just as fun you know what i'm saying the but consider me soul no do i want to be am i hype am i hype for battlefield halo and uh, uh tiny tina and all that stuff man i'm super excited and i know that i really don't have nothing to worry about when it comes to uh borderlands or or, or uh bethesda games and stuff like that because bethesda they gonna come with it you know what i'm saying and judging from the look of elden ring phew, I mean, I, it's really not much to say. These games look beautiful. These games came through, and those games were the highlight of E3. But as far as I'd have to say, don't get your hopes up, guys. A dev's going to be a dev. And these days, these devs don't give a fuck about us. All they care about is getting that dollar and filling up a game full of bullshit that they, that's not needed. And it's going to just ruin it. And it's just not going to fit. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, man. I, I, E3, for me, wasn't... Uh, we had some highlights. And you're looking at one of them. But for me, E3 could have been way better. This isn't the E3 that I used to watch. Back then, man, it was like hype from beginning to end. There was so much downtime in this E3. I felt like... <laughs> Like they, I, it was times where I even just stopped watching. It was times where I, I was streaming it for a couple for a little while and, and and whatnot. But after so long, I felt like I was wasting my time. I could have been doing something else, you know. 
So guys, that's just gonna be that's my thoughts on E3, and that's going that's how I feel about the situation. I just was expecting to see more, and we didn't get as much as I I would have liked for us to get. You know what I'm saying? But what we did get was good enough in some cases. Most other cases, come on, step it up. And I find myself saying this a lot to people to these devs. Step it up, guys. And if you agree with me, guys, and you feel it, let me know your thoughts on uh, E3 and what you feel was the highlight of it, what you took for most of it, what was the disappointment. Let me know all that down in the comments. And uh, don't forget to like the video. Subscribe if you're new. And welcome to the Beanie Shack, man. You know what I'm saying? Appreciate you for coming through. Uh, you're more than welcome to take a look at anything else that I got on the channel. And uh, hit that bell for notifications, too, so you'll know when I when I post and I go live or stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? So, guys, uh, yeah, y'all have a good day. E3 wasn't a big bust, but, you know, it could have been better. So, yeah. Yeah, I just, I just.